In this video, we're gonna delve into Obsidian. We're gonna look at what it is, how it works, and how it can enhance your thinking and your creativity. Take a look, what do you think? Some people say that it's very complicated, which can be off-putting. It's not though. The story of Obsidian is a fascinating one. It enables you to have an electronic version of a technique used by many of the great thinkers and writers throughout history. Get yourself comfortable while we dig into Obsidian. In her book, Big Magic, Creative Living Beyond Fear, Elizabeth Gilbert asks the question, do you have the courage to bring forth the treasures that are hidden within you? Obsidian is a tool that will help you uncover those treasures. Oh, and that's what I like about it. How do you think? I don't mean at a biological level. I mean, when you're thinking about a subject or an event, what happens? You probably have a series of connected thoughts going through your mind. Some are clustered tightly around a particular topic. Others are related, but more distant. And some of those thoughts could be relevant to other subjects that aren't currently the focus of your attention. Obsidian is sometimes referred to as a note-taking app, which makes it sound boring and undersells what it's capable of. I see it more as a thought-linking app. Have you heard of Nicholas Luhmann? There's no reason why you should, unless you're a fan of Zettelkasten. Nicholas Luhmann was a social scientist and a prolific writer. He wrote 70 books and almost 400 papers. What subjects did he write on? Well, according to Wikipedia, uh, law, economy, politics, art, religion, ecology, mass media, and love. He attributed his huge capacity for writing to the Zettelkasten method. And a lot of other writers and thinkers have used something similar. Walter Benjamin, Leibniz, Ronald Reagan. This video is not about Ronald Reagan or the Zettelkasten method. But now that I've mentioned it, I'll give you a brief overview because it is very relevant to Obsidian. Uh, Zettelkasten is a note-taking method. Each note is an idea, a thought, a piece of information, and each new note is connected to other potentially relevant notes. But wait a minute, that's how we described thought processes earlier on. Linked ideas. Mm. And Zettelkasten is designed to mimic the way our brains work, encouraging the emergence of new ideas. Obsidian is fabulous for that. If you want to find out more about Zettelkasten, there's a book. There's always a book, How to Take Smart Notes. Um, this is uh, split into three sections. The first section is about Zettelkasten. I mean, it's all related to Zettelkasten, but the first section explains the technique. And then the second section talks about the four underlying principles. And the third section is the six, six steps to successful writing. I thought sections two and three were better than the first section. But those two sections talk about learning or the theory of learning. And I like the book for that reason. And now to Obsidian. And by the way, guess which app I used to write the script for this video? Yes, Obsidian. To get it, you go to obsidian.md and you can download it. Once you've downloaded and installed it, then open it up and you need to create a vault. Now, a vault is essentially a folder where all your notes are stored. On the first launch, you'll be prompted to create a new vault. Choose a name and a location on your computer for your vault. And the vault will house all your notes, which are just simple markdown files. And this is the Obsidian interface. So I'm going to show you the most basic setup. Get used to that. And then over time, your way of using it will emerge. Exactly what will happen with your ideas. This is all you need to know to get started. Control N, Command N on a Mac opens a new note. Give the note a title at the top of the note, and that's also the file name. Linking notes is Obsidian Strength. You create a link by typing double open square bracket and then the name of the file that you want to link to. If that file doesn't already exist, by clicking on it, you will create that file. And tags. Tags help you combine notes into categories. Type a hashtag and then the tag that you want to create. All notes with that tag will be linked and you can give a note more than one tag. And that's it. That's all you need to know to get you started. There's so much more. You can create folders. There are backlinks showing you how many notes link to the current node. You can look at how many outlinks there are in a particular node. You can search notes and filter the results. There are thousands of plugins. You can make templates for frequently created notes. You can synchronize everything across multiple devices and make your notes look better by learning Markdown. All of this will come. But to start with, create a note, create links and use tags and then develop your own system. Why does this work? Imagine you're writing an essay. You do your research, make notes, write them in a Word document. You expand on your ideas and everything goes in the Word document. When you finish writing the essay, you save your notes, close them, and then move on to the next project. All of those thoughts and ideas are trapped in that document. 
are not accessible for any other project. With each project you create these research and note prisons. Your work from previous projects cannot link to new work. It's kind of lost and wasted. The power of Obsidian is that all of your important thoughts and ideas from projects are linked to other important thoughts and ideas from other projects. It's like the World Wide Web. You can follow links. It's the web of your brain, your personal wiki. The proper name for it is PKB, Personal Knowledge Base. It's powerful. Use it. And is Obsidian the best tool for this kind of thing? Yes. Uh, no. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Depending on who you ask, it's the best or there are many apps that are better. It's great or it isn't. But the important point is this. It works and it does everything that you need it to do to build your personal knowledge base, which could transform the way you think. And now you've watched this video, you know how to use it. Don't fall into the trap of spending hours trying to research the right tool because you'll waste your time. Worse than that, you'll waste your time under the illusion that you're spending it wisely. Oh, before you go, there's something I want to share that I think you'll like. It's a documentary I found on Magellan TV called Hannah Fry's Magic Numbers. It's a journey through the evolution of maths from its philosophical origins to its status as a universal language and the foundation for all of science. Magellan TV is a platform that's dedicated to bringing you a curated selection of the finest documentaries from around the world. Their ad-free 4K content includes the drama of history, the thrill of scientific discovery, and the beauty of the natural world. Click on the link in the description to get a 30-day free trial and watch Hannah Fry's Magic Numbers and all the rest of Magellan TV's extensive collection of over 3,000 documentaries.